Good afternoon, everyone. How are you all? <laughs> I wanted to say it's been a long time, I know, since I did a video. I'm sorry about that. This life, you know how life will get in the way. A lot of things has transpired, transpired since last time I saw you. Went through a, a bout of depression. Um, and to all those who were worried about the depression, I'm now on medication. Um, I just went to go see a doctor and now she put me on medication. Feeling a little bit better. A lot of my depression comes from where I work, work at and it's not the clients that I work with, but it's the people around me that so-called, it's the so-called employees um, and the boss. The boss has on several occasions try, attempted to get rid of me, called me out and out of group when I was still in group and began to tell me things like he didn't trust me, basically meaning he didn't like me. I don't know why, but, um, and I think a lot of that, a lot of what I deal with where I work at is, is ego, it's people's egos that gets in the way of them. I don't go there to compete with anyone. I go there to do a job and to take care of the people that God put in my path to take care of. Um, the clients know that and they respond a lot of times to that. I've had a lot of clients tell me that, um, to tell me that they want to be me or they want to be like me when they go through their recovery and whatnot. And there's been a lot of incidences that's kind of proved to me of where I belong, that I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing. There's been situations where, like one time I got sick for a week and when I went back to work, I had bronchitis real bad and I went back to work and I found out when I got back that they, the clients there thought that I had gotten fired because no one told them that I, why I was out or anything until the clients went to the office, the main office, and was t uh, threatening that if they don't, if, if they fired me, then they would, all of them would leave the facility. They would no longer seek services at that place. Um, gotten a lot of commentation from the clients. Every time I go in the group, I tell them that y'all give me energy, you give me life. And I love what I do because of them. And they've stood up for me more than one time threatened that if they was to ever get rid of me, that the whole place would clear out. One incident that stands out um, in my head all the time, and I tell the client that is, he had just started the program, and a week later, they were going to split the groups up again and, and reorganize the groups. And they took him out of my group, and this client, that day when he found, they found out he was not going to be in my group, this client went and packed all his stuff, Went, on the, went and stood on the sidewalk and told them that if you take me out of Travis's group, I'm getting the hell out of here. I'm leaving. This client was so adamant about it, he was not coming back in there until they put it back in my group. I was told by the staff that day from the office that, that they went to him and they told him, but don't worry about it, but by 12 o'clock today, we'll have you back in Travis's room. We're, for, we're sorry for the confusion which that has been a resounding theme as a lot of clients will do that. They'll say, I don't want to be in the other groups because Travis cares about us and he is doing all he can to make sure that we, uh, we're we going to be okay. And inside of his group, they'll learn the most. And that means a lot to me, again, because you know it keeps me doing what I do. I love what I do. I love helping people. I love to see people get better. Um, and it's like... I've, I physically have to remove myself from the premises in order to keep a client from looking me up because if they see me sitting somewhere, they're going to come talk to me. Um, I don't see them doing that to a lot of people there. One of the most empowering things too about where I work at is a lot of clients will tell me that, Travis, when I leave this program, once I complete treatment here, I want your phone number because I want to keep in touch with you because I want you to make you a part of my support system. So I've got hundreds of numbers of clients that's coming in and out of treatment and calling me and texting me after hours to make sure that I'm okay and for me to check on them. And again, I say it's the most empowering, most empowering thing that I can ever experience. I love these people. I love what I do. 
then one of the biggest reasons why I've learned here to have gratitude for what I do is I just found out last, not past Thursday, but the Thursday before a week ago, went to, a, went to my doctor and found out that for the second time this year, I was told that I have cancer. And first time I was told that back in May, I ignored it. I didn't want to believe that it was true. So I didn't do anything about it. I didn't respond or react to it. But I just found out a week ago Thursday that it's true that I have cancer. So I can't avoid it anymore. It's real. It's something I'm going to have to... Then I'm processing something I'm trying to come to terms with. Um, so the day I found out that I did, the day I found out that I had cancer, oh my God, I remember hearing the news and then going to work the next day and <laughs> my mind, once I got in that group and I knew that these people loved me and I loved them and they wanted me there, the thought of cancer soon went, left my mind and I didn't think about it when I was in the group. It's because these people fed so much life into me and they always consistently do. They feed life into me. I can't believe that. That little old me can be Little old me can be so inspirational to someone that I, people would tell me that they want to do what I do and be like me. Why? Because little, it's little old me, you know, I just, like I tell them, I can't do this without you, you know, and I can't be who I am without them. But it's the most humbling experience in the world to know that you can affect someone's life that much. In the darkest, darkest times, I meet these people. A lot of them come and tell me that right before they came in treatment, they were sleeping in under bridges and they lost everything and lost their family. And I was reminded one day, a few weeks ago, I was reminded by God that there was years ago that I prayed. And when I was praying, I asked God, I said, Lord, I want to see a true miracle. I want to see you perform a true miracle. And I began to tell God then that I don't want to see someone get a house because it's easy to do. I don't want to see somebody get a brand new car because it's easy to do. I wanted God to show me and let me be witness to him taking someone who's lost everything and was on the street and watch him put them back together and living and thriving again. Another day I went into group and I stood there and it dawned on me that the prayer that I prayed years ago, God told me, you are standing in the manifestation of your prayer. You prayed to watch people get restored. You prayed to watch people get healed. And every time you walk up into a group of people and you do what you do, I'm letting you see that manifestation of that prayer that you prayed. 